this is going to catch the air and pull pull the parachute out but we need to make we needed to make sure that it has enough force to actually pull the parachute out of the robot and extract all the lines and the parachute from these bungees to complete the deployment sequence yeah so the deployment is started with the motor there you go So it's been a while since you last saw us. We're still working on the project and a lot's been happening since. This year I've been working on the parachute deployment and looking at the characteristics of, um, of that. So how it, uh, what sort of force is that it sees when it deploys. Um, and we've just, last couple of weeks, um, been told that we're, we're allowed to test it in the UK. So yeah, that's huge news for the project. So This is the test rig that's gonna be used for the initial live test drops from a plane. Um, the reason we we're doing that and not using the freefall camera is that if it does go wrong, um, then we haven't ruined our only prototype. They basically just got a couple servo motors, battery, um, and the Arduino unit at the back. Um, you can see it's not finished just yet, but um, it will be in a couple of days. Parachute sits in here in its container, which is uh, fits into this D bag deployment bag, um, and will we'll be extracted using a pilot chute. So this is the mini 12-inch pilot chute. So that all goes in there. It will use uh, these servo motors and a GPS unit to um, control the pattern of flight. So at the end of September, we uh, acquired the parachute from Performance Designs and it's an Optimum 30, so it's 30 square foot in size. Just to give you a comparison, I jump a parachute which is 135 square foot in size. So this is quite a large reduction. Sort of see the shape that it's gonna take. It's probably windy enough to fly outside. Yeah. <laughs> So I've made computer models of the different degrees of freedom in which the robot can move. So that's the model of the, of the robot and the vertical thing is the fins. If you wanted it to track from one point to another, that's what the fins would do. It's basically just turning the, the forces that you expect from the motion of the fins into what you expect the robot to do. I created this using only theory, so no data. If we can verify that that simulation works, then we can use the computer to, to create a controller that, that moves it reliably. And what we did in the wind tunnel this week, my experiments were, there were five parts to them. Two of them were just checking how fast it falls at different flap settings and how fast it spins at different fin settings. So it was just setting it to a, a fin position and watching it spin as fast as it can. So that was fun. And by measuring the, that velocity of the spin, we know how the forces of the fins relate to the motion of the robot. Well, that's important. Uh, in order to do that, we had to mod uh, modify the bottom. So I had to put these attachments in the bottom to hold it to the net of the tunnel. Because if it's spinning at really fast speeds, it could go anywhere and hit someone and you wouldn't be able to stop it. So we needed a way to keep the test safe. The parachute's never flown before, so we're still uh, crossing our fingers about that. It's, it's difficult to scale parachutes, not just the, the way they fly, but the way you control them. So we don't know whether we're going to have enough, uh, you know, fine control over, the, over where it goes. We could end up landing anywhere or, or uh, not flying at all. So we'll see. <laughs> it's going to be a, an interesting test.